Good morning lovely people, how are you all today? I hope you're well. I'm coming to you from yet another absolutely scorching day. The weather this year, oh my goodness, it feels like we've been in the height of summer for gosh weeks and weeks and weeks now. We're still in the first week of June. Anyway, it's really hot out there, that's why I look like this. Um, the last video you saw, I was having my mammoth get everything just sewn and get it in all in the ground. And one of my jobs that day was to clear the broad bean bed. So I cleared it of all the broad beans, but I didn't have time to give it a bit of a tickle over and to start my next planting in that bed, which is what I'm going to do today. So this morning, so far, I've just, well, I say a tickle, that bed needed more than a tickle, hence the colour of my cheeks. Um, if you think about it, the, the, that's, uh, that ground hasn't been touched since last October, so November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, it's getting on for eight months, so it was really quite compact. And there was no way I was going to be able to just sew straight into it today. So I have given it a bit of a dig over, um, obviously I wish I could have avoided that but I can't and the the near end where I'm going to put the next sort of beans in the cocoa de bambol, that's not too bad so I can probably plant into there but the little bit behind I'm hoping to requisition for my rose de bain tomatoes was really really lumpy so I've got a tiny 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 drag of compost left so I might have to use that with the tomatoes as well just to give them a little bit of a start. So that's that's the plan for today, not much else. Um, I will be dashing off later for the tennis because it's one of the finals this afternoon um, and I've missed quite a lot this year and I really, really, really enjoy my tennis so that's going to be my treat to myself. And then later on I'll come back to the garden to water. Um, and just a word on watering because at the moment, um, well, when I was watering last night it started to rain. Yay! It was, I mean it was just spit spot, spit spot, it was, it was not anything, it was not going to come to anything. Um, so at the moment we're we're hot, we're dry, not just that, we've we're having quite a lot of wind around and that's very drying too. So please, please, please don't think you can just go to your allotment at the weekend and give everything a good water and walk away from it again. There are some plants which need more help than that. What I tend to do when I come down to water is the first thing I do actually is in all the beds I just stick my hand in the soil to see how far down it is before I'm hitting moisture and as these days and weeks of heat are going by that moisture is kind of disappearing a bit apart from in the beds where I've mulched but even in the beds where I've mulched it's not there's not much there now if you've got some bigger, more established plants, like say I had with my broad beans, they may get away with being watered two or three times a week. You know, they're bigger plants, they've got a much longer root system, they've got many, many more roots, so they've got loads more chances to get down and get out to find their water. But if you think about things like all your pots and troughs, window boxes, hanging baskets, all that sort of thing, that's a tiny amount of soil, the moisture in those things is going to evaporate with the weather we're having easily in the space of a day. And in fact, some of you may find that with your hanging baskets and pots and things, you may even need to be watering twice a day, which, you know, it's just how it is, isn't it? But then even in the main part of the garden, <clears throat> just think about the different stages your different veggies are at. So like I say, if you've got some sort of big well-established plants even things like your fruit bushes and things like that they may only need watering two or three times a week a really good soak two or three times a week but they still need a bit of help as well because they're trying to form their fruits and what are their fruits made from yeah exactly but then we come to things like um our seed beds 
so anywhere where you've got freshly sown seeds, so I know there's loads of us who've re-sown things like carrots, lettuces, parsnips, beet root, all that kind of thing. If you've got a seed bed and you only water it once a week, they are not going to stand a chance. They're, like I say, actually like the containers, they're dry in the space of a day. So keep an eye on your seed beds. And then also, so for example, the equivalent would, in my garden would be in the cathedral bed where I've underplanted with all my sort of leafy, salady type things. Teeny, teeny, tiny little seedlings are up. Imagine how how long their root is, maybe that long. How are they gonna get down to find water? So yeah, we do need to help. And of course, you know, there's a theory about if we don't water, it makes the plant go and look for water and it develops longer roots. You know, I completely buy that. But when they're at the tender seedling stage, they're just, they're gonna die before they've got a chance of finding water. So, when you're at your plots or in your gardens, stick your hand in the soil, see how far down you have to go for your moisture, have your materials ready for mulching, get your water in, get the mulch on top once you've watered, and uh, just enjoy the time in the evening in the garden with the birds singing and the water splashing. Right, time to go and plant some plants. Oh, thank heavens for this little bit of breeze. I don't know if you can get a sense through the camera of just how hot it is, but um, hot and bright. Hey, buddy. Um, but yeah, it's it's uncomfortable. I mean, it's gorgeous, but it's the kind of weather for just sitting around doing nothing in, not trying to garden. Um, <coughs> so that's another reason to get this lot done and skedaddle and find some shade for the afternoon. And then I think, like I said earlier, I think I'm just gonna have to come back and water later. There's not much point watering now um, because it'll just, it'll be gone in two seconds. I will give these a water when they go in. Now, in an ideal world, I wouldn't really be wanting to transplant on such a hot day either. However, these are the days we're getting. This is it. So in for penny, in for pound. And fortunately, I've grown more than I need, I think. So A, I might have spares to give to friends and B, I'll hold some back and then if, if any of them fail or get eaten, I'll plug the gaps. So my favorite little cocoa de Pampol, hang on a minute, there we go. Can you see? Just in case you're wondering at the spelling, so I don't have to do a little label on the bottom of the screen. If anyone's been following my Facebook page for the last couple of years, you'll know how much I have completely fallen in love with this bean, this gorgeous, humble little bean. It was absolute love at first bite. I was originally given seven, was it seven or ten, I can't remember now, but literally a little handful of seeds from Gary whose wife had brought them back from, she'd been on a culinary course in France, tried them, they worked brilliantly. So, one of the reasons I like them is, oh, they're so ready to go out. You can also tell that from the, the yellowing that they're really, really hungry to get into the ground. Um, yeah, so this is, I think my, this is either my third or fourth, I think this is my third year growing them. And what I found is, oh, touch wood, my head will have to do. The slugs seem to leave them alone. I've just jinxed myself, haven't I, by saying that. Um, germination, I get pretty much, just looking, I think of all, of all the pots I sowed, one didn't come up, just one. So the germination is great. They're really easy to sow the seed from year to year. I was able to not only harvest loads for eating, but managed to save so many seeds that actually I've been able to give them to tons and tons of friends as well. So the, the way to have your coco de pampol is what's known as demi-sec, semi-dry. So you harvest them, I will show you when the time comes, because the harvest, it's, a, it's quite a narrow window 
it's usually about the first, second week of September and you want to get the beans just right when they're, they're kind of fat enough in the pod but before they start to dry. So you pick them when they're still green, not green in colour but green as in wet and then very simply either use them or, because you'll have too many, chuck them in the freezer. They freeze brilliantly and oh, they harvest prolifically, they freeze brilliantly. What is not to love about the good old coco de bambol? But more than anything, the taste, oh my goodness. They have a beautiful, buttery, creamy texture. They retain a little bit of their bite, but essentially they're just, yeah, creamy. Creamy is the best way to describe it. So I use them in all sorts. I, I cook them up and just have, sometimes I'll just have a little bowl of them as a snack. <laughs> Gorgeous. But in salads, in soups, um, you may have seen I added some to my fasolada, my Greek bean stew. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Yeah, these are really desperate to go in. So in terms of spacing, I'm a little tiny bit stingy, as I am with everything, but about 25 centimetres apart in each direction. So 25 centimetres between them in the row, 25 centimetres between each of the rows. Um, like I say, hopefully I'm gonna have spares to either plug any gaps if any of mine die for whatever reason, but more importantly, to give some away because, as you know, I've been given tomatoes this year, I've been given a, those couple of celery, the leeks, um, so it'd be really nice. Excuse me, oh, excuse me, oh, oh, excuse me, oh, tickle. Um, yeah, so it'd be really great if I've got leftovers and I can return the favour to folks. So I'll carry on get the rest of these in if you can see can you see, I'm just going to see if it's in the shop in the background that's the broad beans I'm saving for seed so just in terms of accessing for harvesting I'm going to leave a little tiny bit of a path here and then come the winter because I want to now establish paths and keep them I'll just dig that over and then I'll establish a an acrossways path but for now I'll keep that just for access and then hopefully get the rose to burn over there and here they are, so still pretty tiddly, but my goodness, I really want this to grow. I'm, I'm, obviously I'm gonna give them a go because getting this tomato back from the south of France in one piece, with all those disasters of transport I had on the, on the way home, and that, oh my goodness, that manic dash across Paris to, after we'd got to, God, Leon, after we come back from the south, then we had to cross Paris to get to Gardino for our, uh, I've gone French now, Eurostar on the way home. And I managed to keep a tomato whole. <laughs> so yes, this is very, very, very precious. If mine don't come to a fruition, I'm just putting the word out there to all of you who I gave seeds to. Please, 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 can you save some seeds from your harvest so that if mine fail, you can send some back to me, please. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, precious, right. Let's get on with these cocoa de Pampol and, um, and then I can give them all a, a jolly good soaking. And then I can take myself home, give myself a soaking while I watch the tennis and then come back and water later on. Yay, happy beans. Roses, Scorchio. 
it's getting hotter and hotter by the second. I have stolen <laughs> one of the beers I've got here for the slugs. It's cheap beer, but cheers everyone. It's cold and that's what I need. Ah, oh, brilliant. To be honest, I'm looking at the bed now. When I started trying to dig that bed out this morning, it was so hard. I actually didn't think I'd get to the stage of planting anything. So I'm chuffed that I've got those um, cocoa de pampol in because you, you know, saw from the roots and they're yellowing, they were desperate to go in the ground. So I'm really pleased they're in now. I've given them all a bit of water just to settle them in and some of them were quite dry. Um, the thing about wa watering is it's about, it's half one. I know what time it is because I'm thinking about legging it for the um, tennis. The thing about watering at this time of day I wouldn't do it for the rest of the garden normally, but if you've got no choice, just be mindful. Try not to try to water at the base of the plant rather than onto the leaves, because all the drops of water on the leaves they're like little magnifying glasses or prisms, and they concentrate the sun's rays into that spot, and you'll get little burnt leaves. Bless him. Some chuffed the cocoa is in. I haven't put the rose de berm in. Um, like I said, it's just getting too hot and I think the sensible thing now is to retreat to the shade and then I can come back this evening when I come to water, I can quickly pop the tomatoes into, I say quickly, <laughs> with that soil, <laughs> probably take me about half an hour. Oh, what are you going to just, if you can hear all that noise, that's some of my um, plot neighbours getting excited, they're, they're quite new and they're look around all the different plots for ideas and inspiration and every now and again you hear their excited voices Wah! in the background i love it they're so friendly i love it um anyway i think it's time for five minutes of just sitting and having a sip mm. gosh that's nice touch warm but, but it'll do yeah, so I'm going to have a little sit for five minutes before I wend my way home. So for now, I shall say cheerio to you all. Happy planting. Hopefully, we're all at the same sort of stage now where pretty much everything is planted and sown. And we can get these lovely moments now where we can just sit back on the deck and enjoy the breeze and the sunshine. I hope that's the stage you're at too. I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, happy gardening, happy sports watching, happy sitting and being, happy everything. Take care.